God bless you, loved ones. Welcome to the Word with Chester. Today we'll continue study in the 18th chapter of the book of Revelation. I am so happy to stand before you each time. Uh, it's a blessing to me just to do something for God. Thank God for all of you that uh, turn aside to let us know one way or another that you're listening to us and that you're enjoying what we're doing. That means a lot to me. Regardless to what some may say, it means a lot to get an amen every now and then. And those of you that, are, that have been around the church world, you know what amen means uh, to a preacher. And I'm like every other person. I need encouragement from time to time. And it means a lot to me when you turn aside to let me know that you are watching this ministry. I thank God that uh, I, I believe this is a very uh, a valuable ministry to the kingdom of God. It's not much in the eyes of some some people, but you have to understand anything for God's kingdom is something. And if one person is being reached and helped through this ministry, that's worth it right there. But thank God we have people listening in many parts of our world. And I, I want you to know, all of you to know, that I thank God for you because I realize you don't have to listen. Uh, we're in such an important study now, the book of Revelation, and I do uh, understand that I, our uh, listeners has in, have increased since we have been studying uh, the book of Revelation, but I want you to know this part of Scripture and every part of Scripture is important, and I encourage you to stay with us and, and listen to the broadcast. I know that God will bless you, and let me let you know this. You're blessing to me when I know that you're watching. I need an amen every now and then. I want to thank God for those people that uh, uh, take of their valuable time to help us in one way or another. Uh, it doesn't always have to be money. Uh, that uh, is a help to us, but sometimes uh, your time and your service means a lot to us. Uh, I've mentioned Mr. Lampkin so many times uh, because he's the one that converts our video uh, into a form that can go out over the internet, and I appreciate him for what he's doing, but all of you that help me out and, and uh, let me know that you're watching and uh, 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 let me know that, that, that I can make it, and you do what you can to help us, that, that's a blessing to me and I want you to know how much I appreciate you. I realize I can't do uh, even this ministry all by myself. I need someone uh, to help me and keep me encouraged. I ask that you pray for this ministry on a daily basis. Pray for us that God will anoint me for his service. I realize especially when we're dealing in a book like the book of Revelation how important it is to for us to word our uh, words right and say the right thing. Uh, because number one, people's souls are at stake, and and especially when you're dealing with certain areas uh, uh, of the world, some may, someone may be offended because something is said about that area. But you have to understand, we're reading the Bible, uh, and these things are in the Bible that we're talking about. We're not specifically talking about a group of people, uh, but we have to talk about the region, or uh, if the Bible mentions a city or a spirit of a city, you have to understand why. Those of you that was not with us in our last lesson, I encourage you to go to uh, our last session and, and listen to that session in, in its entirety and you'll learn more what we're talking about, uh, talking about that city, that great whore, and why it was called that and why, why the Bible depicted it as that, because such evil and different things were going on in that region that God was not pleased with. And we're going to read more about that today and conclude this book uh, of the uh, uh, the 18th chapter of the book of Revelation. Uh, it, it, all of the things that we've talked to you about is necessary for you to understanding uh, to understand God's word and what He is talking about and what He expects to, expects of us. Uh, you have to also understand. You have to know what displeases God, and the Bible is there uh, not only to let you know what pleases God. But he also lets us know what displeases him. And uh, the things that were going on in this region, you have to understand uh, uh, the region of Babylon, uh, there was great commerce going on there uh, uh, because it was a, a, a city that, that uh, uh, the ships could come in uh, uh, to the Persian Gulf and reach anywhere, actually go anywhere in the world uh, from that to uh, take cargo or bring in cargo. And uh, uh, you have to understand its importance and also the, the uh, the Euphrates River and the Tigris River, where 
it's set between. So you get get that get this picture. What an important commerce area it is, and not only a commerce area. Well, uh, you can call it commerce if you want to, uh, but anytime there's money being made, money being exchanged, especially great deals of money, uh, it also brings in the wrong kind of businesses. Uh, it brings in the wrong type of uh, uh, atmosphere. Uh, where where there's money is, you're going to find that the, uh, the party atmosphere is greater. Uh, and, and you know that from going from a smaller city, maybe to a larger city or a more popular city, that there's more things to do uh, because that city has uh, uh, the numbers and the commerce that's going in there. Uh, more money comes in, so they put more recreational things there. Uh, well, I, I'm bringing out the point, and I brought it out in our last lesson, uh, that this was a heavy commerce area where lots of money come through. Uh, lots of people were made very, very wealthy, uh, but it also uh, uh, let the dark side of, of, of humanity come in, uh, the dark side to where they had uh, 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 prostitution and all of these type of things there, uh, because many uh, men had money, they made much money there, and so uh, any time much money is made, it brings in the wrong thing, uh, whether that be drug trafficking or illegal substances or, or whatever the case may be. Anytime there's great amounts of money, it also brings a dark side in. And that's what we discovered in our last lesson as we read, I believe we read to, to verse 13. I'm going to reread verse 13 and we will continue uh, in verse 12, 13, and even 14. It talks about much of the, uh, the, the merchants that was in that area, gold and silver and precious stones and pearls and fine linen uh, and purple and, and, and silk and scarlet uh, and uh, all uh, uh, fines of wood and all kinds of vessels of ivory and all kinds of vessels uh, of most precious woods uh, and of bronze and iron uh, and marble. Get that now. All of these great things, what are, what are all these things for? Uh, vessels of ivory, art Facts and, and uh, uh, different things that are usable vases and all of these type of things and uh, brass works, iron works. You got to understand the kings uh, of the world would come in that area and they would buy certain things what uh, uh, and beautify their own uh, nation, our own country, uh, a certain buildings. They had to buy the products somewhere. Much of the products were bought were bought right there in Babylon. In verse 13, we will read on, uh, and cinnamons, and uh, incense, and ointments, and frank, uh, frankincense, and wine, uh, and oil, uh, and fine flour, and wheat, and cattle, and sheep, and horses, and chariots, and slaves, uh, and souls of men. All of these things were sold uh, there in Babylon. Uh, now, you can understand why uh, well, wine, and oil, and fly, fine flour, and uh, horses, chariots, all of these things sheep, horses, talking about uh, uh, food and things of that nature for people, uh, but it talks about also slaves and the souls of men here. Uh, anytime you traffic in slavery, uh, uh, in some areas of the, of the world, it, it's, it's, it was legal at that time, and I imagine sometime, uh, some places now, uh, but <coughs> uh, please excuse me, you got to get that uh, in, your uh, in your heart and in your mind, all of these things were sold. Slaves and the souls of men. How can you deal with the souls of men? Anytime you take a man in slavery, anytime you take him and break him of his uh, 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 of his will to live or, 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 or break his manhood, whatever, you're dealing with the souls of men. Well, let's read in verse 14, and the fruit that thy soul lusted after are departed from thee, and all things which were dainties and, and sumptuous uh, and uh, uh, are departed from thee, and thou shalt find them no more at all. This is talking about after the destruction, after the destruction of this great city. Uh, the Bible termed it as a, as a great whore. Uh, well, what are you talking about? Because all of the things that we mentioned that were going on there. You got to understand, God does not mind you making money uh, in, in a legal sense. He doesn't mind you uh, 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 having a successful business. So we're not talking, uh, God is not angry at people uh, uh, doing commerce, uh, but he does get angry 
hurt when you uh, when you start using your money for the wrong thing uh, or hurting people with your money instead of helping them uh, or trying to subdue them and make them yours another human being you supposed to have you supposed to have enough ethics uh, to try to help humanity and not bring it under your subjection can you see all of these things uh, well, well when God judges the city judge the this, this entire places all of these dainty things that they have some of them are good you know good fruit is good and and uh, uh, you know all of the 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 the, uh, uh, the things that they could enjoy uh, God wasn't displeased with everything that they could enjoy uh, but they also took that city and make it a made it a wicked city be uh, all of, because of all of the corrupt things uh, that were going on there uh, so uh, uh, the writer here is letting us know that the fruit and, and uh, 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 all that they lusted after all the things that they wanted uh, their dainties and, and and, uh, 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 and sumptuous uh, uh, um, are, are departed from thee, uh, and thou shalt find them no more at all. In other words, all of the things that you really enjoyed uh, have departed from thee now uh, at the destruction of this city. In verse 15, uh, the merchants of these things uh, who were made rich by her shall stand afar off uh, uh, for the fear of her torment of weeping and wailing. Now, what are you talking about now? Let me read 15 again. The merchants of these things uh, who were made rich by her shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing. Now, even the ones that made money in that area, uh, they gonna, some of them going to make it and get, them, get away from there. Uh, and they're going to stand at a distance seeing all the torment and things that, that, that have happened there. Uh, and they're going to be crying and wailing. Why would they be crying? Uh, let me read 15 again and I'll talk about it. Uh, the merchants of these things uh, who were made rich by her shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment. They'll see the destruction that's happened to her and they will also have fear. Weeping and wailing. Uh, why would they be weeping and wailing? Uh, why? Because their income is going to be affected. Uh, you got to understand in an area where there's a lot of money changing, uh, a lot of money going through, a lot of commerce, uh, don't you know it's not only the people that live in that area that's making money. Uh, there's outside investors, investors from other kingdoms, uh, uh, other lands, and all of these type of things. Uh, well, you got to understand these people, when they see the destruction of the city, uh, they'll be sitting back weeping. Number one, they're going to be thinking about all the dollars that they're not going to be able to make because this great, safe, uh, this great city is destroyed. Uh, shall we read in verse 16? And saying, alas, alas, uh, that great city that was clothed uh, in fine linen and purple and scarlet uh, and, uh, and bedecked with gold uh, and precious stones uh, and pearls. Get it, all of the, the, the array and the beauty that goes with it. Uh, verse 17, um, for in one hour, uh, so great riches are come to nothing. Uh, one hour, uh, it don't take long to destroy it now. What are you, one hour, uh, what can happen? Anything can happen. Uh, one bomb could destroy a city uh, of great importance, uh, uh, or one earthquake, or one natural disaster. God can do, to, uh, uh, do things in so many ways, uh, you can't pinpoint it and say this is going to happen or that's going to happen, but if God says it's going to happen, you have to know it will happen. You may not know how it's going to happen, but you know it will happen. Why? Because God said it. For in one hour, so great a riches are come to nothing, uh, and every shipmaster uh, and all the company uh, in ships and sailors, uh, and as many as trade by sea, uh, stood up off. Uh, in other words, it was destroyed, and they couldn't come into the city. They had to look from a distance at all of the destruction, uh, and not only look from a distance, <coughs> uh, hear about it in, in different places. Uh, different types of ways. Uh, in today's society, uh, when something happens anywhere in the world, uh, we pretty much know it right away. Uh, why? Because newscasters pick it up and they broadcast it in the day that we live. In those days, uh, well, they would write letters and those letters would sometimes would take, a, a take time to get to that destination. A word of mouth. Uh, one way or another, they had their ways of communication. Uh, and all of this stuff 
uh, all the things that happened began to go through and people would hear about it uh, and they would stand in awe. Uh, number one, because so many of them made money themselves out of the area. So many of them were uh, were affected because that, that riches, uh, uh, that vein of their money was stopped. Uh, well, let's read in verse 18. And cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? Verse 19, And they cast dust on their heads, and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city in which were made rich of all that that had ships in the sea uh, by reason of her uh, costliness, um, for in one hour uh, is she made desolate. Uh, one hour the place is destroyed. Uh, it don't take one, it don't take God long to do anything. Uh, if he speaks a word, uh, it will happen. Uh, and it, it can happen so quick. Uh, Sometimes we think we get so big that, that nothing can happen to us. Uh, 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 our little situation is so strong that nothing can happen. But all God has to do is speak a word, and the greatest of anything will come down. Well, shall we read in verse 20? The word of God reads, Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God has avenged you of her. God has avenged you of her. Now, let's read it. Rejoice over her, thou heaven, well, heavenly, heaven where God is, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God has avenged you on her. What are you talking about? The, the, the prophets, well, they turn a deaf ear to even even their preaching uh, or the word of the Lord that they had uh, because things were going on so they wouldn't even hear the, the apostles and the prophets. Uh, you got to understand, and, and uh, in a region like that, uh, you got to understand, especially in older days, Bible days, and things of that nature, a preacher go down there preaching too much and too hard uh, and disrupting commerce. Uh, don't you know they got a way to rub you out? Uh, not only then, but now. If your message affects commerce too much, uh, somebody's going to do whatever they can to destroy you. Uh, if, they can't de if they can't destroy you physically, or kill you, they'll try to they'll try to destroy your influence so people won't listen to you. That kind of nonsense is going on today. You better understand God sees and God will judge you. Anytime you're going to try to bring up this on somebody to destroy their character or destroy their enemy, using any little thing to use against people to bring them down, I'm here to let you know God is against you. His blood is against you. Uh, and he will tear you down. Uh, you don't get so strong that God's hands can't reach you uh, and slap you anywhere. Uh, understand that mess is going on in the day that we live. Uh, well, uh, well, I, I better get off of that now. Uh, but it's happening. Uh, people's mouth, they use their money and they use their influence uh, to defame people uh, or try to make whatever they're doing of none effect uh, by propaganda. All of this type of things is happening. It happened back in the day. Uh, so the prophets that get to rejoice uh, because they put their finger in your face uh, and said you're wrong. Uh, and when they said it, if you turn a deaf ear to it, uh, God will, uh, he will judge you. Let's read in verse 21. Uh, and, the, and a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone uh, and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall the great city uh, Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. That great city uh, thrown down and won't be found no more at all. That's how severe it's going to be. Uh, right now in the history of Babylon, they've had many wars. Uh, but let me let you know, uh, enough has been left for us to remember it. Uh, but when God's hand, when God's hand move, uh, and when God's hands drop, uh, it, can it can wipe you out to where you remembered uh, no more. Well, let's read in verse 22. <clears throat> And the voice of harpers and, and minstrels, uh, that word minstrels, we're talking about musicians, uh, music makers, if you please, uh, and flute players and trumpeters uh, shall be heard no more in that 
uh, at all in thee, uh, and no craftsman, uh, and whatever craft he be, uh, shall be found any more in thee, uh, and the sound of the millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee. What is he saying? Uh, all of the music and the musicians and the party going and all that kind of stuff that takes musicians, uh, they won't be needed anymore. Uh, it won't be heard. Uh, and all the craftsmen that build things and make things, uh, artifacts of whatever the whatever that they do, uh, it's not going to be needed anymore there. Uh, you got to understand it. And the sound of millstone, uh, a millstone grinds or the millstone prepared, whether that be wheat or flour, and all of those type of things, there won't even be no more sound of a millstone heard and no more at all in thee. Can you see how severe this thing will be when this city is, uh, uh, is destroyed by the hand of God? In verse 23, uh, and the light of a lamp shall shine no more at all in thee, uh, and the voice of the bridegroom and all uh, uh, of the bride uh, shall be heard no more. Uh, what are you talking about? People go to a, a fancy and nice place to, to have their weddings and, and to honeymoon and all these type of things. Uh, that's what the writer is saying is not going to be heard no more in thee. Uh, 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 no more in thee, uh, shall we continue in 23, uh, for thy merchants uh, were the great men of the earth, uh, for by thy sorceries uh, were all nations deceived, uh, by your sorceries, uh, what are you talking about sorceries, uh, witchcrafts and uh, all of these soothsaying and types of things, uh, don't you know it goes on in the world today, uh, a lot of things is going on, uh, well, you better watch these people, they, they be call yourself trying to put a root on you. Uh, I dare you to say the blood of Jesus is against you uh, and, and tell God to turn anything like that away from you and send it right back to the one who sent it out. He will do it. Uh, don't you know there's people that's all in all kinds of uh, witchcrafts and uh, hoodoos and all of that kind of mess. Uh, God is not pleased with it uh, and he will judge that spirit. Uh, I don't care where it's at. Uh, we're talking about a great city here. This great city is going to be destroyed because of it. If he'll destroy this city because of it, don't you know he can reach wherever you are and where you live and get you because you're doing the same thing. Well, uh, better watch that word sorceries uh, where all nations deceive. Well, you got to understand that kind of message. It goes on. But God is in charge and the blood of Jesus is against that type of thing. And the blood of Jesus can protect you. I dare you to plead the blood of Jesus uh, over your own life and watch him protect you. In verse 24, <clears throat> And in her, in her was found uh, the blood of prophets uh, and of saints uh, and of all that were slain upon the earth. Uh, in her was slain uh, the blood of prophets now, uh, the blood of saints uh, and all that was slain upon the earth. Uh, what do you mean? Because the prophets, the preachers uh, and, and the saints, uh, they cried out against this stuff uh, and you turn a deaf ear to them. Uh, when you turn a deaf ear to God uh, and what he's saying through his manservant, uh, if you reach out to hurt them, don't you know you'll bring the hand of God down on you? Well, anyone that named the name of the Lord, and I'm talking about credible, true ministers of God, it's best for you to leave them alone and not try to fight out and lash out to hurt them if they're preaching against what you do. If it's in the Bible, just say, God, forgive me. I'm sorry about that. And turn around, repent of it, and go the other direction. But you got to understand, when a preacher gets on commerce, gets on the way they do business, you got to understand, if he starts coming out against them and their wrongdoing, and they're doing a, a, a handling of doing something wrong, making money the wrong way, if he speaks out against it, you got to know God sent him to speak out against it. Your job is just to say, God, I'm sorry. Forgive me, forgive me for my sins. And God will forgive you instead of reaching out to hurt 
people because they're disrupting your flow of, uh, of commerce. Don't you know if it's wrong the way you get your money, if it's wrong the way you do, and God is against it, the long run, if you don't change, you'll be worse if you shut that person's mouth. I dare you to, 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 to just say, God, I'm sorry. God, forgive me for my wrong and turn around. God has more ways to bless you than a corrupt system, a, a, a corrupt way of doing business. God will supply your needs according to his riches and glory. And you don't have to stoop to the devil to do anything ungodly. You don't have to stoop to the devil to do anything that's not like Jesus. That's what we're saying here in verse 24. And in, in her was found the blood of the prophets and of the saints and all that were slain upon the earth. You got to get that. You got to understand. You get the attention of God when you mess with his men and women servants. You get the attention of God when you reach out to hurt someone that really loves the Lord. God will stand up and he will work against you. Well, my friends, I want you to know that I love you with the love of the Lord. That's the reason I'll tell you the truth. And I'll never back up off the truth, and I'll never back up off God's Word. Because the Word of God is alive. It's quick, it's powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even the, to the dividing asunder of the soul of the Spirit and the Spirit. God is watching you, my friends. Watch what you do. Watch how you, you entreat God's people. If you treat them right, wrong, the hand of God will be against you. Well, I'll say it again. I love you, my friends. That's the reason I stand on the Word of God and teach it like I teach it. I love you, and I want to see you prosper. I want God's blessing to be upon you and not His hand of, of destruction. Why? Because He loves you. He loves you, and He wants you to repent. That's the reason He sent prophets down, to get you to repent for your wrong. That's the reason He sent the saints of God, to get you to repent for your wrong. If you don't repent, it's not their fault. And God puts his hand on you, it's your fault. Again, I say, I love you, my friends. I love you with the love of the Lord. If you would like to contact us for any reason, you can write me at the Work with Chester Ministries, Post Office Box 200483, San Antonio, Texas, 78220. You can also reach me at my website, www dot poems by Chester dot com that's P O E M S B Y C H E S T E R dot com uh, contact us uh, go where it says the uh, uh, about the author click there it will take you down uh, uh, to a place that, that you can make comments or ask questions uh, please leave your returning information and I will get back with you uh, I want you to know that I love you uh, that's the reason I teach and preach the word of God. Also, my friends, if you would like to uh, like to talk to someone alive on the telephone, a living human being, not a recording, uh, not a computer, uh, I want you to call this number. There will be a person uh, that will answer the phone for you. Uh, 1-866-276-0211. That's our toll-free telephone number. Uh, you can reach us there any time of day. Uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You can also link up to do anything that we do in our ministry. Ask your questions. You can uh, 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 leave a prayer request, and we will put you on our prayer list and pray for you. Again, I say, I love you, my friends. I love you with the love of the Lord. God bless you.